Well, I'm leaving the sawmill and uh, got my sawdust and picked up a couple bales of straw. And being springtime, it's the time of year that we redo our Jenny track. I don't have the luxury of keeping it under cover. So uh, during the winter, it takes a little bit of beating. I don't use it much in the wintertime because of drainage and water problems. So. But uh, the base of the Jenny is more important than the actual Jenny itself. Um, you, you know, you got to have a good surface for a dog to run on, a surface that drains well, so you can use it after a summer rain and uh, it doesn't sit full of water for a month or uh, uh, becomes a uh, secondary septic tank for your yard. So um, anyhow, so sawdust is easily available. You can also use rice holes. That's a Texas favorite and whatever raw materials are available in your area. Um, I heard cotton seed holes work really well too. Uh, and this is just regular straw I'm going to use. And uh, I'm going to head out of here and um, go to the uh, uh, farm and rebuild that Jenny track. can really cut their feet on these things. Get sticks out here and oh there's a big one. Look at that. That would have cut right through a dog's pad. And all the water it just brings the stones to the top and you get a heavy rain and it washes stones into the track. So uh, we'll get this track cleaned up and put the sawdust down and the straw down. Uh, the main thing we're going to do is we're going to put the straw down first, uh, a couple bales, put it out thin. And uh, that helps hold the straw to the track, we put the sawdust to the track. So uh, we put the straw out and then the sawdust on top of it. And after we do that, I've got my collapsible portable jenny here. Uh, if this thing was completely broken down, you could fit it into a, in a closet, no doubt about it. And uh, so we're going to get this put together and uh, set this thing up and put a bulldog on it and see how it works. has been cleaned of all debris, a rake down at least a half inch to an inch in, uh, under the surface of it looking for any kind of debris, rocks, sticks, anything like that. After that was done, then we put down one bale of straw on this track. This track's about 20 feet in diameter. Uh, and now you want to make sure when you put the straw down that you put it down evenly and all the way up on the rim of the track because the straw is going to hold the sawdust in place. Now a uh, pickup truck of sawdust has been added over top of the straw and uh, this really makes for a, a, a good running surface. It drains well, uh, it, it, it gives, it's a good running surface for the dog to run on as the uh, surface gives enough, has a spring to it to uh, help limit joint damage during long conditioning programs. Now we're going to begin to assemble the Jenny. 
and it just comes in about seven or eight pieces. This is the base unit that spikes into the ground with the spikes that are already in place and now we'll put those into the ground. When the Jenny's fully assembled now, it's got the bait arm up and the counterweight, and uh, we're going to go get a dog and run him on it and show you how this thing works. This Jenny here was built by the gambler, and one of his first uh, portable Jennies he ever built, and I'm still using it every season. Uh, we'll be right back with the Bulldog. Here we have Lulu's Gouty running the assembled portable Jenny, and as you can see, it's a smooth running, stable piece of equipment with a uh, terrific track for the dog to run on. The Jenny's track, to me, is just as important, if not more so, than the Jenny itself, the uh, mechanical part of it. Because, uh, you know, if you just set a Jenny up in a field without the proper ground preparation, uh, you're just flirting with disaster. The dog's going to cut his feet. Uh, he's going to injure his joints from running on that hard, hard ground. And uh, maybe a track like this is a little bit of work, but so is being a dog man. So if you're going to do it, do it right, or just run your dog on a treadmill, which we're mainly going to concentrate on in this video, but we will be doing some jenny work with the young dog that we're going to train and then it's as important as it is with the jenny here you have a nice wooded location everything's been cleared and raked and ready for the chain set up and dog house to be installed use the standard axle car axle setup with the chain bolted around it but before i install that i always like to dig a hole out uh, big enough to bury everything underground so that the axle and chain doesn't come up out of the ground and get tied up on the end so we have the swivel up at the end of the chain i'll show you that in a minute you can see the chain is secured around the axle the axle's in place uh, the chain's been checked to make sure the dog doesn't get tangled around anything the perimeter is clear for the dog to run free on his chain the axle's now been put at least six seven inches below ground and the swivel is on the end of the chain and it's secured as you can see with a cold snap and then the swivel itself is uh, attached to the, uh, the end of the cold snap. It's a very, very secure setup. So as you can see, we've got everything set up here. Concrete water bowl, dog food bowl, nice waterproof dry house with proper bedding in it to help keep the dog warm during the winter and so they don't lay against that hard plastic. And uh, it's, uh, that's about it. It's a good, safe, secure setup. If you do it right, your dogs won't get loose. But of course, you gotta have your collars on right. And you gotta use good collars. Lulu, she's my Clemens Dick and Lulu's Callie. Uh, she's about nine, 10 months old. Uh, as you can see, the collar she's wearing, that's from O'Brien Dog Supply. It's a four-ply collar. We really like them. You get no collar rub from them, uh, just top of the line stuff. Uh, that collar attached to that swivel and then swivel attached with that cold snap and all that into the ground this is a secure setup so uh, the uh, uh, as you can see she's quite comfortable on it there's no chance for it to get twisted as the swivel setup is up by the dog's neck so uh, next time you're doing a chain setup maybe get this video out and Take a few ideas from us. This is the Hell on Earth conception stand. It helps you get a tie with a difficult pitch. It raises up in the back for a taller stud or a smaller female. It adjusts out probably will fit 30 to 45 pound females. The usual model will come with nylon collars. This one's made with leather. Painted should be pretty durable. Have dog boxes for $85 per box. We get kennel rates if you get more than one. They're made all out of screws and 5 8 inch plywood. 
studs on every corner, caulk painted twice. Also make uh, bigger houses or welping boxes to order. The colors vary depending on the paint I'm using. The door on the house is, is up higher to hold straw or bedding, whatever bedding of choice that you want to use. And the front and back have like buffer zones on them so the dog has a little something to chew on before he destroys the house all the way. So who do they get a hold of to get this stuff? HOE Kennels at AOL. This is Rosita, um, a sister to a champion Mr. Rabbit from the Art of Victory. And uh, she's just near the end of her heat cycle. I've bred her two or three times already. But uh, we're going to breed her today. And uh, I, I don't really like using a breeding stand unless it's a last resort. And uh, this dog is a little crazy, but I can still get it bred. The uh, main thing is, is for the dog to be in heat on the right day and ready to breed because if it's too late in the heat cycle or too early in the heat cycle uh, you're going to have problems and produce stress for the dog and make it hard on the bitch and the male so uh i'm going to go ahead and get these two bred and as you can see she's flagging really nice she's like 15 16 days in um, Best information I got on breeding was from Jerry Clemens, and that's to breed them on the 14th day for sure. As you can see, she's she's no crazy. Man. Some of the worst yard accidents I've had is trying to breed two dogs together. Roughly two eyes here is Mr. Casanova. And I believe that fish here could not chew his head off and he wouldn't lay a mouth on her. Just hoping he'd get to breed her one more time. So we'll let these dogs stay tied here for a few minutes. And this is a father to daughter breeding. Uh, Rosita's out of Two Eyes and Boudreaux Shine. And Shine is uh, right out of Grand Champion Patsy Klein, bred to Boudreaux's Maverick. All right, behave yourself. Uh, two Eyes here. He's about blind, too. As you can see, with just the difficulty I'm having, and I'm a so called professional, can you imagine? Just one guy out here messing around trying to breed two dogs. So as you can see, she's almost out of her heat. That's why she's so aggravated with him and we got such a short tie. But uh, when she was about 13, 14 days in, I think we got him tied for 10, 15 minutes. And that's about the average time for a tie, 10 to 15 minutes. So if you think you can kind of put up with this, which this is kind of mild, I've seen much more excitement go on trying to breed two game dogs and uh if you uh, can put up with doing it this way do it this way or uh buy one of the breeding stands available from several different people uh like there's the one you saw in here from uh, hell on earth i believe red river curly's got a model for sale and a couple of to successfully raise a dog uh involves a lot more than puppy chow and fresh water and a good dog house. Uh, it requires having a good field of information to get what you need to know about your dog and it also requires a personal bond between you and that dog. 
not just throwing him on a chain with another 20, 30, 40, 50 dogs and spending no time with that dog at all. Uh, it's very, very important to spend as much time as you can with each dog because that's, that's, that's what they require. And uh, in today's time, in, in this new century, uh, smaller is better, whether it's industry, government, or a yard of dogs. And the average guy out there that's watching this tape and spent the money on it, I'm going to show you how to raise four or five dogs and get the same results as somebody that's raising 50 or 60. The first thing to do when trying to get good dogs is the type of person you buy dogs from. And every guy that buys two dogs out there right away wants to get his thousand bucks back he spent on the two pups at $500 in each at AOL.com. And it just doesn't work like that, you know. Uh, first, you got to put into your dogs really their value. Those dogs are worth more than $500 each. Um, you know, the, the bond and the, and, the, and the time that you spend with a dog is, is, is tremendously, a hundred times more valuable than the 500 initial dollars that you spend on that puppy. And for that person to just take those two pups and begin breeding them together and selling their puppies for $500, that's all well and good. It's a free country. But if you're serious about buying dogs and buying the right kind of dogs, you want to get them from real dog men, guys with 15, 20 years experience. And there's plenty of them out there. All you have to do is research what's going on, talk to the right people, take your time. You know, buying dogs isn't like going to Walmart and buying a garbage can. You just don't go to aisle number six and grab what you want. You want to do a little investigation and uh, you'll end up with some nice dogs. But then, even if you've got $500 or $200 bulldogs bought out of the newspaper from somebody that doesn't have a clue about the dog game, that's never shown a dog, doesn't know how to take care of a dog, still give that dog his all and your all and he'll give you his all. What you been doing with your pup today, Phil? I've been taking him for a daily walk. All right, where'd y'all go? We walked up and down the driveway and all around the field. Well, it looks like he's pretty warm, huh? He's sweating pretty good there. Now, are you going to take him out walking some more or are you going to go give her some water? I'll go give her some water and I might take her for another walk. Well, that sounds like a good idea. That sounds like a real good idea. The, uh, um, some of the main things that you need to look at to get a pup that's this healthy. Let her, let her run around here a little bit, Philip. Let me take a look at it. Hey, baby. Look at the health of this dog. This is just a super healthy puppy here. She's about 12 weeks old. Uh, as you can see, nice coat, heavy, but not a fat little tub. And uh, uh, she's well on her way to being uh, uh, a good little dog, we hope. Um, she was raised on Exceed dog food from Sam's Club, which is predominantly chicken and rice-based dog food. Uh, it's, com it's comparable to dog foods like Iams, Yukonuba, Science Diet. Uh, at a fraction of the cost. It's about $17 for 40 pounds of it. Um, we'll show you later on what we feed the main yard, and that is we, uh, we mix this 50-50 with Sportsman's Choice, or now they call it NutriCare, which is also sold at Sam's Club nationwide. Um, <clears throat> also, this pup was given AGDT Champion Dailies, which is our new vitamin and mineral supplement. Uh, it's an all-in-one product you'll hear more about later. Of course, with a puppy like this, we'll just give her one a day. Um, when they get older, you know, and you're working dogs, you uh, approximately give them one for every five pounds of body weight, which I don't think she's much more than that, you know? Here you go, Philip. Uh, also, some other good products when you're trying to raise pups and get them this healthy. Uh, when there's very small Formulac, it's a milk replacer. You can actually use this in addition to the female's milk, especially if you pick one out of the litter that you find special. Take him while you're watching TV or something. Mix up a little bottle of this and feed it to the pup, you know, and, and uh, get that nice bond with the dog. And uh, in addition to that, we have a calf maker, which it comes in different names. It's available at all uh, farm supply stores, and it's a... Uh, it's a milk replacer for calves, and what you do is you mix this with uh, very hot water, and that allows it to mix properly, and then let it cool back off to where you can touch it. And then uh, a, a pan very much like this are, are great pans to put it in, and uh, put in about what the pups will eat in a couple hours, and 
You don't want to leave it out because it'll spoil just like regular milk. But if you put the right amount in, the, the pups will be fine. And uh, that's about it for uh, feeding. And uh, we'll get into worming a little bit once we get down and show you some uh, pup setups and dog houses and some puppy collars and things like that. And uh, we're going to get little Bonnie here to uh, show you some tricks on her uh, uh, squirt pole and also a little puppy setup spring pole. And we like to bring them along slowly but surely, even at an early age. Beautiful Virginia afternoon. And before we get into doing the flirt pole with the pup and showing you the pup house and those things, uh, I want to kind of go into more on nutrition and health with the puppy because it's, it's so important and there's so much stuff out there that you can get from different suppliers. Um, and again, before we get into that, I want to introduce you to my son, Philip, who has been a dog man since the day he was born, and he's trying harder every day. Really enjoy spending time with your dogs. And uh, how you doing today, Philip? Fine. Doing good, huh? Did yep. you get the Spetty put up after uh, giving her some water there? Yes. Well, that's good. We're going to go over there and give her a shot and fix her up some food here in a minute, okay? Okay. So, uh, uh, how'd you do on your basketball this year? You want to brag about that championship a little bit? Yeah. Uh, how, how many games did you guys win? Uh, Eleven. How many did you lose? Just one. And uh, how, how about that championship? We didn't lose none. So, you were the Vandalia Vikings, were the uh, 1999 2000 champions? Yes. Well, that's the most excellent, dude. All right, congratulations. So, see, you know, don't have to just have champion dogs. You can have champion people like my son here, Philip. All right, well, let's get into some different products here. The, uh, you know, you always want to have little treats for your dogs and things like that. And you know, here's some different things that we feed. And you know, you got a variety of products here. I'm, I, I'm a junkie when it comes to these vet supply catalogs. I love buying stuff out of them. Uh, there's just all kinds of great treasures hidden in here. Um, and then also a lot of basic things you need. For instance, um, uh, this pyrental pomade is uh, a great mild wormer for puppies. And uh, we like using this product. And you can order this directly out of KV Vet catalog. Also, the Gerontol Plus, or this product, which is a Mexican version of it, you can get from your veterinarian, which is a Geronset tablet used for um, uh, tapeworms, but it also has other wormers in it that is a full spectrum wormer. And this particular brand, uh, a half of one of these for a 10 pound puppy is, is a great wormer. It gets every kind of worm a dog has. Also with pups, your source for vaccinations is important. And also the handling of vaccinations. We need to give Speddy, Phillips Pup, a Parvo shot. So, uh, and actually it's an eight-way shot, uh, covering everything from leptode, parvovirus, and uh, the other terrible diseases that these dogs suffer. Uh, I use the Fort Dodge DPV2 puppy shot. It's available in KV Vet catalog. You can get 25 doses for around $70. And it's really important how you handle these. They, they say for about 10 or 15 more dollars, they'll pack them with uh, ice and, uh, and send them overnight. And I suggest you have that done. And as soon as you get the package, put it in refrigeration. And when you <clears throat> mix a shot up like I just did, I took the liquid and mixed it with the powder and then drew it back out. And then put your cap on, make sure your air is out. Put your cap back on and then put it in a glass of ice water like that and then you want to carry that out to where the dog is and if you're going to mix it up on site where the dog is keep your vaccines in uh, in ice water as you're mixing them one by one and if you've got a litter of pups out there put all the powdered ones the powdered ones of course don't need to be uh, refrigerated but put all your, your uh, liquid ones in there so anyhow that's a uh, good little trick right there to help you out uh, we were talking earlier about the calf maker, and uh, what I do is I mix two cups. This is for a, a litter of pups, say four, five, six puppies. They can eat this in a half hour or so. Of course, this is too much for one pup, but just to give you the idea, you put two cups of calf maker in a little bucket, 
and then mix a gallon of hot water. And you want to make sure the water is hot because if it's not really, really hot, the uh, mixture tends to clump up and it doesn't uh, mix very well. So mix that up and we'll let that sit for a minute. While I was getting these products out to show you, I just have so much stuff in the kitchen where I keep it that I just figured I'd share all that with you too. Um, again, I was talking about dog treats. Pig ears are, are a good dog treat. They say they're a lot better than those dry rawhides because the rawhides have the square rough edges where these pig ears, they're supposedly more digestible and the dogs seem to enjoy them. You do want to take them when you buy them and put them on a cookie pan and put them in the oven or out on your gas grill or wherever for about 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and around 300 degrees, 350 degrees. The best numbers are 300 degrees for 30 minutes in the household oven. But if you've got them on an outdoor grill, about 15 minutes, or until they start smelling like they're ready to eat, you know, that'd probably be a good time to take them off. Um, also, I like I like these little T-bones, you know, and, and, and it's good to give these dogs treats, you know. Uh, they really enjoy it. Um, pups like these, I get these at Sam's Club, and it uh, looks like a little piece of steak, and you know, a lot of times when you're fixing your dog's show food, mix everything up and say you're not two weeks out and you got plenty of time still. It doesn't hurt to throw one of those on top of his food as you set his bowl down. I know he'll sure will appreciate it and it's not going to hurt anything. And then of course you got the good old Sam's Club cookies which uh, these happen to come in this designer can with Sam Walton's Old Roy dog on there. And talking about Old Roy now, I'm kind of outraged. I, I saw the recent bag at Sam's Club of their uh, Neutral one or whatever they call it now and it didn't have old Roy on it and I just want to say Sam I remember old Roy. Well, that was a damn good bird dog buddy and then uh, they got the little cookies and, and uh, The dogs love these and they're cheap. You know, you don't have to spend six bucks on t-bones You can buy you know ten pounds of these for three dollars at uh, Sam's Club and you know, tell them old Roy sent you Anyhow, we can step around here to some other things that I uh was looking at as I was getting out the essentials. Again, the AGDT Champion Daily, this, this product is going to be widely available. Uh, and it's, a, it's an excellent product. It is the vitamin and minerals that we think are best for dogs. And it is a, uh, uh, a compound of those vitamins and minerals manufactured in German laboratories and uh, shipped worldwide from there. Uh, for more information on it, you can go to agdt.com and agdt.de. Uh, excellent product. And uh, for a pup like Spetty, you know, she's, she's actually around 10 pounds, 12 pounds. I figured that out when I picked her up on the hill. So 12-pound uh, dog, just give her a couple of these, and they'll dilute. You don't have to crush them up or anything like that. Just uh, uh, throw them in there wait about five or six minutes. They're actually pretty tasty. Uh, the dogs, I've seen pups actually eat them just as a pill, uh, much like they do the cookies and the T-bones. But Just throw them in a little water with their food and let it dilute. Um, another good product that's uh, manufactured by Wholesale Kennel Supply and is available through us and also Wholesale Kennel Supply, which will give you their phone number, um, is a vitamin supplement. It's a, it's a pediatric vitamin. And it's, it's strictly for, for little puppies that are still on the mother. And it comes with a uh, insulin syringe. And you give a pup a half cc of this twice a day while it's still on the mother. And uh, it really gives them a boost. And sometimes when you're inbreeding dogs, uh, they need a boost. And uh, this this will do it right here until they're on actually solid food. When you get them on solid food, you can switch them over to the AGDT dailies. Um, Another good product for pups is peak performance. Now, of course, you don't want to give a puppy a lot of peak performance. Uh, they have another product called Peak Grow, but to be honest, you can take Peak 2 and mix a cup of Peak 2 with a cup of, a cup of the uh, calf maker, 
and take those that powder there and use it uh, powder coat it on your pup's dry food or mix a little water with it and it works great because basically peak grow is a is a is a, is a heavy fat version of peak two and that's accomplished by mixing this 50 50 with the calf maker and then use that to powder coat your dog food with um, <clears throat> another good product for pups that we found is the formulac and this also is manufactured by wholesale kennel supply and available for sale through us um, it's a great milk replacer you know if you have a bitch that isn't taking care of the pups uh, again like I said before you want to help with that special bond uh, you can actually feed this to the pup take it away from the mother for a little while and, and feed it to the pup and then put it back with the mother um, it's, it's a really good product and uh, uh, just a good alternative depending on how much you want to put forth but if you got a bitch that won't take care of the puppies it works great uh, you still got to keep them warm and feed them every two or three hours but this one's right on the money and this was developed by a dog man this was the guy that does this runs wholesale kennel supply he also raises uh, big cats lions tigers things of that nature so there's a lot of experience in these products from wholesale kennel supply he's also the guy that brought you tough pad and uh, i know you Remember that from the first video, but uh, we'll go more into Tough Pad and some different applications for it later on in this tape. Um, another great product is the Iron Plus. This is available in the KB Vet catalog, and the Iron Plus is just what it says. It's an iron supplement plus vitamins. Um, it's another good product. Just, just put a little splash in there with that gallon of milk. Um, pups really can't get enough iron. And iron is one of the elements that if they do get too much, they just pass it through their stool. There's no uh, toxic um, side effects to a puppy getting an overdose of iron. So there's another product for you. Um, recently, I've been hearing a lot of problems with people having dogs suffering from anemia, uh, whether they're grown dogs or puppies. And our veterinarian, uh, Dr. Mike Woods in Greensboro, North Carolina, a great guy and, and a, a specialist in the pit bull breed, from over 15 years of experience, uh, turned us on to a, <clears throat> a cure for this anemia that really seems to work well. Uh, tetracycline, which is a, uh, a common broad-spectrum antibiotic, is available in the KB Vet catalog under the brand name of fish psyllin. Now, this fish psyllin is uh, just regular tetracycline packaged to be opened in the capsule uh, the capsule opened into the fish tank but it is what it says on here this product right here is 250 milligrams of tetracycline and what you do for anemia on a, on a grown dog is give them two of these tablets every eight hours and you give them five cc's of mixotonic which is a vitamin iron mineral supplement this is a real strong vitamin iron mineral supplement and these two together over a four week period are an excellent cure for this yard anemia that seems to be sweeping the dog game. But also for pups, if you've got pups that are a little weak, um, this is another good product, you know, to give with any type of antibiotic therapy you use it on your pups. Say your pups get the runs and your vet says, uh, well, put the puppy on Batril. Or your puppy has got the sniffle nose and your veterinarian says, well, put that pup on amoxicillin. Well, if you get that type of diagnosis from your veterinarian about your puppy's ailment, I suggest you buy some Lixitonic from KV Vet Catalog and, um, and administer two to three cc's orally each time that you give the prescribed amount of antibiotics that your veterinarian has told you to give. Uh, a couple other products here. <laughs> like I said, I go mad in this KV Vet Catalog. Anti-mating spray, you know. Sometimes you, you, you might have a bitch that's in heat and you don't have room and you're not planning on breeding her, you know. Now if you're planning on breeding a female and she's in heat, I strongly suggest the moment she begins to get puffy, you keep her put up unless she is under direct eye contact. But if you're in a situation where, you know, you, you can't or you've got her in a cage and she's attracting the neighborhood dogs, trying to sleep at night, you know, this is a good product. It works. I, I know it looks funny, you know. wonder what bloodline that dog's out of. What do you think, huh? Well, from, that's from my yard. And uh, this is another product from my friend at Wholesale Kennel Supply. Oops. Uh, apparently you know what that's for. And uh, again, I wonder what bloodline that dog's from. 
And then another one is the Ajax Hot Spot ointment. And this is really, really good for uh, scaly elbows, eczema, things like that. Uh, it, it works. It's a, it's a good product. A um, little expensive, but it's good. And then the sulfidine, which is a sulfur camphor petroleum-based product, you get a pound of that for 20 bucks from us at www.agdt.com. So, <clears throat> we're going to take the vaccine and the milk. You can give me a hand fillet and grab that milk. And we're going to go over here and feed Spetty. And no way she's going to be able to eat all this, but you'll be like a fat man at a buffet, won't you? Huh? Come on. Ten kennel run. Uh, it's on a clean dirt surface. Uh, we have enough room to slide this kennel uh, over in both in, to its right direction um, at, when we want to clean it thoroughly. But we put the straw down every day and rake the straw up every day. Uh, keep the doghouse clean, as you can see. It's one of the doghouses from Hell on Earth kennels. Um, those watering bowls are nice. I like the concrete bowls too, but those are easier when you have to clean the kennel every day. You can lift it up and out of there. It's a hard plastic bowl. Uh, you can get it at your feed supply stores. Um, the uh, uh, collar that the dog's wearing, that's from O'Brien Dog Supply. I like to put a collar on a dog by the time it's 12, 13 weeks old and start letting it get used to wearing it. Uh, it's easier to walk the dog and work the dog and things like that when it's comfortable wearing a collar. Well, we're going to go ahead and give this pup a shot. And, uh, you know, for years it was always give a pup a shot under the, under the nap of the neck here, right here. But uh, recently they've changed that and say that it's safer to put the, the, the shot down into the muscle here. And that's how you want to do it. Real easy. She likes it, I think. Here you go, Philip. Take her. And uh, I'm going to mix up her food. Now, this is enough food for about five puppies, so we'll let her eat it. And uh, then what she doesn't eat, we give to her granddaddy over there or something. So the food, the, the milk is now cooled off. And... Just pour that in there. Let that sit for a couple minutes. And while that sits, let me show you the uh, spring pole for puppies. Go ahead and put it down there, Phil. Spatty. Spatty. Hey, girl. Come here. Come here. Come here, girl. Come here. Get it. Get it. Hey. Uh-oh. I think she likes that milk better than check that spring pole. The main thing you want to do is make sure that you're... Uh, Pups, you spend a lot of time with them until they're six months old. You need to teach them how to walk on a leash, and you need to teach them how to play with the hide, which we're going to show you in a minute. And I like to put up little toys for them, things that aren't they're not going to hurt themselves on. And this is just a piece of hemp rope uh, with a regular stick just hanging there. And uh, she likes it. She has a good time with it. But I think she'll have more fun with this uh, milk and AGDT dailies and dog food. What do you think? Huh? You want to give that a try? Working pups with. It's a nice, safe way to work them. And uh, just take a piece of cowhide and some twine from a bale of straw and a stick. And as you can see, it's quite effective in working a young dog. She has a good time playing with it. And, uh, she's, uh, hey, get it. Come on. Hey, right here. There it is. Come on. Get it, get it, yeah, get it, get it, get it, Spitty, get it, Spitty. Come on, girl, come on, come on. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Look, get it, get it, get it, girl, good girl, good girl. You're a good pop, ain't you, huh? Huh? Spitty. Betty! Betty!
Well, she's liking that. Huh? You like that? You like that? So as you can see, it's a cheap, easy piece of equipment, and uh, these pups sure have a good time with it. So uh, next time you're looking for something to do, get you a piece of cowhide and a string and stick, and have some fun with your puppy. We've just hit the basics about where to buy your pup from and, and uh, how to raise that pup and some, and some ideas to, uh, to better raise that dog. Uh, just do your best in these categories. I don't expect you to buy everything we talk about or to get your dogs from the greatest dog men that ever lived, but just do your best. That's, that's the main thing you want to do because from when you first get a dog as, as a puppy six to eight weeks old to six months old, is so important for that dog as far as his structure, being fed the right products, and having the right attitude towards the way you treat him and spend time with him. So uh, again, just do your best with these pups. Uh, our next segment's going to deal with uh, six to twelve month old. Oh, well, we've pretty much covered the puppies from. Uh, who to buy them from up through six months old and now we get into the more involved task of uh, six to twelve month old dogs. This is a really uh, imperative time for raising a dog as he, he picks up so many habits. A lot of bad habits happen because time's not spent with the dog. So he chews on a dog house and he digs holes and he chews on himself and, and a lot of bad habits. But you spend time with that dog like we're going to show you and uh, the dog will require a lot of good habits. So again, you know, the foot pole works great for six to 12 month old dogs like Blackfoot there. And uh, I think the goon here is trying to get in on it too, but we'll just uh, work them one at a time. Uh, the other thing you want to do, like I said, is teach them good habits. Teach them the right thing to chew on, you know? Teach them to chew on cowhide. Cowhide's a great non-toxic toy for the dogs to work with. Um, and also you want to teach them some obedience. You want to teach your dog to sit and stay. Uh, you'll see why, because we're going to use standing scales a lot in conditioning a dog. And teaching him to sit and stay with the standing scales uh, is, is a whole lot easier to get him to, to, to stand on the scale when you can do that with him. So from here, we're going to go to the building and uh, look at some equipment, some dog collars and the scales, and talk about that. And uh, maybe see if Philip's catching any fish. Well, Philip, do you have any luck fishing out there? No, nope, not today. No luck today. But you're in luck because we're going to start the conditioning program for your young dog. And this is the beginning of it here as far as the regimented work. You know, we talked about getting out with your pup and walking your pup and playing with your pup and doing all that. But now, from 6 to 12 months, what we want you to do every day with your dog is walk him for at least 10 minutes. Now, I know that sounds like, oh, 10 minutes isn't much, but you start doing it every single day and think about all the days you haven't walked your dog for 10 minutes. Once you start walking this dog from 6 to 12 months old every day for 10 minutes. And when you get done with that 10-minute walk, I want you to bring the dog in and give him at least a 10-minute rub down. And I mean working his muscles and, and, and really spending a lot of attention focused right on that dog. And uh, like I showed you earlier with the treadmill, we don't want to run the dog more than five minutes every other day. Maybe let's make it every third day. So we're going to run this six to 12 month old dog five minutes on the treadmill every third day. And again, we go into the reasons about we don't want to work him too much because we don't want to injure this dog. You got plenty of time. So don't get the cart ahead of the horse. And then the other thing that we're going to do with this program, we got 10 minutes hand walking, 10 minutes rub down every day. You got five minutes on the treadmill uh, every three days, once every three days, and then I want you to do 30 minutes hand walking every other day with the dog in addition to the 10 minute daily walking. Now, if you do these things, it, it's really going to help you towards your goal of winning that show with that dog and giving that dog everything that he needs to do well. Well, Philip, let's, uh, let's go back down there and try again, okay? Come on. chain here and give him his daily regimen of work for the 6 to 12 month old dog. Philip, hand me that leash, son. All right. Walk him on a nice long leash so he can uh, get plenty of exercise. We've 
got him on a typical about 12, 13 foot chain. It's on the same type of setup I showed you with the uh, with the other dog, his sister, Lilu. It's the swivel setup with the lap link, or excuse me, not lap link, cold shut. He's got one of the HOE dog houses. He loves it. He'll jump on top of it, and sleep on it, and do all kinds of things. And we got the four fly O'Brien collar on him. Nice. These are horse walking leashes. Uh, buy them at any feed store out of your KB vet catalog. They're six or seven dollars. Great for walking the floor out. So we're just going to take him for a little ten minute walk. Enjoy the day. Give him a little 10 minute walk here. And as you can see, he's having a good time and exploring everything. And we try to walk him in different places and let him look at different things. One of the great advantages to living out in the countryside. And you see how he's walking, he's feeling good. All right, Philip, let's, uh, let's take him back to the... All right, finish Blackfoot's walk, and he's, uh, I was going to say him before, he's about eight or nine months old. Nice, big, healthy dog for that age. He's, he's all Jerry Clemens breeding on top and Lewis Colby's breeding on the bottom. And uh, we're going to rub him down here. I'm going to work all his muscles and... You know, you want to make sure a dog's used to it. A dog that's never been rubbed down before. You see how he's reaching back there, licking my hand? That's because that hurts when I'm squeezing those muscles. And if you take some 22, 24-month-old dog you've never seen before, and you go work him, and then you go giving him a good, strong rub down, man, that dog turn around and bite you. And so, again, this is something you're, you're spending this part of the dog's life, of course, increasing your bond with him, but also, you know, Getting him used to the regimen, being a show dog, uh, being handled, being loved on, because you know he bites the judge. It's over. Uh, you know you've got to have a dog that's that's that's, that's non people aggressive and, and easy going. And uh, I think he suits the bill. Want to work all his muscle groups. You know you don't hurt him. Just a little bit of pressure. Work these shoulders in here. You know put both hands in there and just kind of massage that shoulder. Work at neck. If you're inside a building, a contained area, caged area, fenced in yard, you know, take the collar off the dog. Or rub him down or bring him in the living room and do this on the couch while you're watching Jerry Springer. But definitely rub your dog down for 10 minutes a day and walk him 10 minutes a day minimum. And uh, let's go ahead and try him on the mill. This dog's been on the mill a couple times before and he's, he's really not into it yet. So we're just going to run him on the uh, Chandler mill here just for a minute or two and then take him off and uh, weigh him and I'll show you the scales that we've got and uh, that'll be, uh, that'll be that'll about cover it for the 6 to 12 month old dog and then we'll, we'll move on to the, the, the older dogs. So let's take him over here to the treadmill, Philip. Come on, buddy. Come here. You don't like that, do you?
a piece of cowhide or a live animal or anything like that, I strongly believe in teaching a dog to run because he's having fun and for no other reason. I don't want him trying to get All right. I think that's enough for him. He's a little warm out here today. You do not want to overwork a young dog on the treadmill. Five minutes at a time, three times a week, until he's at least 15, 16 months old at the youngest. You do not want him hurting himself. Um, and this dog, like I said, he's eight, nine months old, and, you know, you can run them when they're, when they're older than that, I mean, uh, younger than that, more than five minutes, maybe. Once they get over a year old, you can run them 10, 15 minutes, three or four times a week. But see, you're not conditioning the dog, and he's not old enough to take that type of work yet. So just be careful. I'm telling you, with mill work, less is better until the dog is at least 18 months old. Just make it fun, make it familiar with it, and use that in your judgment of how much to work your dog on the The standard hand scale been used by dog men for centuries. Uh, they started out weighing dogs on cotton scales, and uh, today they use uh, several different types of heavy-duty capacity merchant scales, like the Chatelian Ironclad, which I've had since the first video I did with Bob Stevens. And you know, it's a, it's a great piece of equipment, and you still need to have one around to weigh your dog at least once or twice a week on it, because in the show, they demand this type of equipment most of the time and your dog has to be familiar with being weighed on that type of equipment. So during the conditioning program you want to weigh the dog at least twice a week on a set of hanging scales. But with our new conditioning program you're going to need to weigh your dog twice a day every day during the conditioning program. And you're going to have to do it on a set of standing scales. The two ways to do this is you can put the uh, sky kennel on the scale and then put the dog in the kennel and get a weight like that. But the best way is to start out with the dog at a young age and prepare him to stand on the scale by him doing it when he's a pup. So uh, I have built a set of standing scales. I found these on the internet. They were made by a company named Palouse. Uh, you can get them at yahooshopping.com. And it's a removable piece, that, uh, uh, electronic scale, and it plugs into a base down here. And if you look down in here, it is a male scale, just a regular platform scale. What I did was I glued with epoxy the, a large piece of plywood to the base of it as a ballast to hold it steady. And then I took a smaller piece of plywood, about the size of the scale at the veterinarian's office, and glued it with epoxy to the top. And uh, it works great. So all that's put together. This piece just plugs into the base, and uh, it's battery operated, so you don't have to have any electricity in your building. You just turn the scale on, and you press the zero button. And as you can see here, it's now on zero, zero. There, Philip, you got black up there. And we're not looking for a super accurate weight. We're just trying to get this dog familiar with this type of equipment. So we just take the dog and stand him on the scale. Stay, stay, black foot. Stay, 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 stay. And he's 49 pounds. So uh, I like to write down a lot of information when I'm conditioning the dog. Phil, would you take the dog, please? I like to write down a lot of information when I'm conditioning the dog, and uh, this helps build that database, because you're going to weigh your dog before and after the workout every day, plus you're going to weigh all the food that your dog eats. And the reasons for all that will be explained later, but for now, that about covers it from a 6 to 12 month old dog, the two things I want to stress the most are you know, keeping the dog extra healthy. Do not overwork them on a treadmill. If you don't even put them on a treadmill until they're 12 or 13 months old is great. Um, and again, find some way to get a set of standing scales. If you need to get them from me, I'll order them for you and make them for you. You know, uh, just, just contact us. You can email us at info at agdt.com. So, 
You're going to take Blackfoot and put him back up, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll start concentrating on the 12 to 18 month old dog. Earlier, I showed you the flirt pole, which is to be used with anything from six to seven week old puppies to six or seven year old dogs when you want to have a good time and a little fun with your dog. Um, the more serious version of the flirt pole is of course the spring pole and you don't want to be working young dogs six to twelve months old on a regular full-size adult spring pole but what you do want to use is use a, a puppy pole or a low spring pole is what I call it. So you get a piece of cowhide like this and I've used a pickaxe to put a hole through it. We do sell it here already pierced at agdt.com but you can just pierce a hole through it. Do not cut a hole with a knife because when you cut a hole it begins to tear and that's not good. So you take the cowhide and you put the rope through the pierced hole like that and then just tie it off like this because you're not you're not getting into all the fancy equipment of the regular spring pole this is just basically something to let your pup play on five or ten minutes a week once or twice a week um, our friend Andreas he knows a lot of people in Europe and places like that and they talk about using it on a door frame like this door frame or your nails or whatever and attach it to the door frame in your apartment or wherever your dwelling is and just put a piece of carpet on the floor and let the dog work the spring pole off of here but of course I, I don't really prefer that I, I prefer putting the dog on an old tree limb and uh, So here we have a good spot, nice tree limb, it's, it's strong enough to hold my weight so it's going to definitely hold a dog working it for a while. So we take this rope, we put it over the tree limb like that, and you don't want it very high off the ground. The dog's head is maybe 12, 14 inches off the ground, so we're going to put this about 12 or 14 inches off the ground. Because again, all this is about making the dog familiar with the equipment. This isn't about working the dog hard. This is all about the dog just having fun. Bring him out over and let him work that spring pole a little bit. You like that black foot, huh? You like that? Yeah, get it, buddy. Get it, buddy. Get it, buddy. There you go. There you go. Come on. Pull it. There you go. Pull it away. Oh, that's fine, isn't it, huh? There you go. There you go. Get it. Get it? Huh? Good boy. Yeah, you like that, don't you, huh? You like that, huh? Never leave a dog working a piece of equipment like this unattended. Don't put a setup like this in your dog's chain space and leave it there permanently during the day because you're just asking for trouble young dog like this get tied up in it. You know, these dogs get into anything. He sure is enjoying that. So 
again, as you can see, it's, it's just preparing him for what's to come. And uh, this, along with the flirt pole, is all I suggest with a young dog like this, 6 to 12 months old. And then later on, we'll get into doing the big spring pole. Now, let's walk him up to the uh, Jenny and see if he'll run that. Now that he has a taste of the cowhide. Where you going, huh? Where you going? Now, you know, if a dog decides to eat some of this cowhide, it's perfectly safe for him. It's just as safe as the pig ears. It's non-toxic. The only chemicals on it are salt. You want that? Huh? You want that? All right. Okay, let's take him on up to the Jenny. Come on, buddy. experience with these things so again remember you got plenty of time with these dogs so until they're 12 months old take your time with them spend lots of time with them oh isn't that right talking about the 12 to 18 month old dog and uh what it takes for the uh maintenance and care and hand raising of that dog uh, the first thing, of course, that's so important is a feed. Now you're dealing more with an adult-type dog. Uh, so you want to put him on a more adult-type food, a more high-performance food, because now you're able to work this dog a little more. You know, I would suggest taking a dog 12 to 18 months old and every day hand-walking him for 20, 30 minutes, an hour if you can, two hours if you can. When you come back from that, run him on the mill for about five minutes, put him on the spring pole for a couple minutes, uh, practice weighing the dog, put him on the scale, weigh him, write his weight down, write down all the info you can on these dogs because you never know what's going to be valuable to you later on. So all the data you can get down on the dogs, any kind of way that you can control the information as far as how much does the dog weigh, when did you give the dog his shots, when did you worm the dog last, write it down, you know, start a file on your dogs, write that stuff down. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to feed Bowser after we get done working him, but I'm going to mix his food up now since we're not going on a scheduled program of a certain amount of food to a certain amount of weight because he's on a general feed. So I want to show you what I'm feeding the 12 to 18 month old dog. He's actually about 19, 20 months old, but just a good candidate for this part of the video. Uh, one of the pieces of equipment you're going to need is a, a scale to weigh your food on. Uh, this scale here is made by Oster. It's uh, just a digital scale, a platform digital scale. You press the on button, put your uh, ball on it. It's got a tear button on here. And uh, just press the tear button. And it goes to zero. Mm, now that's on zero. And I'm just feeding him regular kibble. That's uh, Exceed Dog Food from Sam's Club. And, Walmart has the same product called Maximum Nutrition, the chicken and rice formula, not the lamb and rice. And uh, I'm going to feed him 10 ounces of dog food. Uh, there's 10 ounces of dog food. And the reason I like scales is it's a much more accurate delivery method for the amounts of products that you're feeding the dog. If you use a measuring cup, sometimes the product can kind of be fluffy when it stacks in there. Sometimes it can be compressed. And you're not really sure whether you're given, you know, is a cup this time four ounces and next time six ounces. But with a set of scales, you know exactly what you're feeding your dog. So I'm going to give him 10 ounces of, uh, of dog food, just regular kibble. And then uh, I'm going to put an ounce of Peak Performance 2 in there. And I just move this up to 11 ounces. And there you go. And then I like to give a little canned dog food, especially with the dog that I'm spoiling. 
uh, you know, hand raising him, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to put about two ounces of this canned dog food. This is just regular canned dog food, oh, probably horse meat, from uh, Sam's Club or Walmart. Either one of them is fine. And it's just chunky beef formula, regular canned dog food, uh, just for you technicians out there. It's only 9% crude protein. It's mainly just water and meat. And uh, then uh, I'm going to put a little Abaday in there. And uh, that's, a, that's a good product. It's made out of uh, fish primarily. And uh, I'm going to give him an ounce of that also with his food. And, you know, when you feed a dog like this, you know, we're talking there about keeping three or four dogs at a time. And when you're feeding a dog like this, you know, he knows he's special. I mean, it's not, these dogs aren't stupid, and they know when you fix them something good to eat. And I tell you, there's been days when I would have ate that, no problem. So as you can see, that's, that's looking pretty nice so far. Now, I'm going to feed him his AGDT daily. Now, he's on the maintenance program, so he's not getting one for every... 10 pounds, or excuse me, one for every 5 pounds, he's getting one for every 10, and he weighs about 40 pounds on the chain, 45. I'm going to give him four tablets, two, three, four. That covers all his vitamin needs that a lot of these products don't cover. And I'm going to mix a little water with this. dog will get into measuring the exact amount of water you give the dog. But for this purpose is here, just want to make it look like that. Like a stew or a soup or something. Like that. See what I mean? It looks pretty good. Little chunks of horse meat in there. So then I'm just gonna write down that I feed the 10 ounces of dog food and one ounce each of the other items. And I'll show you this form later on that I use uh, when we get into conditioning. But again, any you know you don't have to use my form. You can use any kind of way to write it down. Put it in your computer, scratch it on a rock, do whatever you can to write down all the information you can about what's going on with your dog. Especially when they start getting to this age, 12 to 18 months. Anything that the dog doesn't like, if uh, say you give him a, um, a penicillin shot or a in some type of antibiotic shot and he has a reaction to it, write that down, you know, because two years from now, you could forget about that information. Okay, so from here, we're going to go out and feed him. I'm going to take him his food and, uh, 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 no, actually, we're not going to feed him now. I'm just going to leave his food in here and we're going to go out and, uh, and work him for a while and then we'll come back in and uh, um, feed him after we finish working him. All right, I just figured I'd bring his dog food outside so I didn't have to traipse in and out of the house. We got this nice little shop for working dogs in and fixing stuff and things like that. And you know, all dog men need a place to work their dogs, that's for sure. And uh, that's where we got a little Chandler meal at. And the scale that we've gone over and we'll go over more that's a primary part of this keep. And, uh, and of course, my notes, because I'm going to weigh this dog and worm him and uh, treat him for parasites and such uh, and show you how I do that. This, uh, this product right here I found is economical and highly effective. It's called BioSpot. Um, you can get a three pack, which these treat uh, 30 pound dogs and up. I think it's, uh, let's see, yeah, 30 pound dogs and up. So, you know, any of your average size pit bulls can use this product. You apply it once a month to them. You just tear this end piece open. Uh, apply it once a month and along the dog's back. All the instructions are there. And it's like seven bucks delivered uh, to your house for three treatments. And it's a great product. And we're going to use one of these on little Bowser today. And, and then give them one once a month during the hot months with the bugs out. But, you know, if you, if you treat your land properly in the winter months, you won't have the flea problems that most people are used to. Uh, get some diazinon or some Dersban or any type of uh, product that they sell at the garden shop for uh, fleas, ticks, flies, things like that, and the granulated stuff, and uh, put it down be just before it rains. And uh, always put it on the high side of your dog areas, you know, so that when it rains, the water flows the chemicals down into the area and it, it distributes it better. So uh, and we're going to worm Bowser today. Uh, the two wormers I like to use are... Uh, Pyrental pomade, 
which is a uh, really mild wormer. It, it, it gets everything except tapeworms and uh, just a good mild wormer. And, uh, and then we're going to give him Ivomeg, which is a heartworm preventative. And uh, we're going to weigh him and see what he weighs. And then we're going to look at the instructions and we're going to give him the proper amounts of both these wormers. It's uh, so important to weigh your dogs when you're giving them any kind of medication, wormers, uh, antibiotics, just anything that your vet prescribes or that you're going to use on your dog. Well, let's go out here and uh, get Bowser and uh, uh, bring him on in here and weigh him. Is secure him properly. And then uh, I'm going to put the bio spot on him. And as you see, the top just tears open like that. Throw any plastic on the ground, dog will eat it, and it'll attach to his stomach. You know, plastic's real bad for him. So even that little piece on there, put it in your pocket. Okay. Then take the bio spot, put it between his shoulder blades, and you just squeeze it out. And I like to use the container itself to ruffle his hair up like that. And uh, he's treated for fleas and ticks for the next month. Uh, in this area here, we have a lot of ticks. The wind gets to blowing and they come off the evergreen trees and we have a lot of tick problems here, but this bio spot has, has knocked it out. Uh, we're really happy with this product. All right, now we're gonna take him in here and weigh him and uh, figure out how much alpha mac and worm to give him. slide it on the scale and hit the zero button after the sky kennels on there and uh, and weigh the dog that way but uh, but this works great so he's 46 pounds now we're gonna worm him after we finish the workout and what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna put him on the treadmill first and, uh, hey buddy work that treadmill son. huh work that meal yeah, man. There you go. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on. 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 
the spring pole with him. Spring and here's our spring pole set up, and this is a setup for a young dog, uh, you know, 12 to 18 months. Remember, no more than five minutes on the treadmill at a time. And then on your spring pole, you want it low to the ground, where the dog can work it easily. Also, over here, I've got the chain, the counter chain. As you can see, it's connected in the top of the tree up there. The chain comes down. And then I'm going to hook the chain to the back of the dog's neck. And now he's going to work the hide. And if you look here, you'll see that the chain is producing a really good counterweight for this dog. You need to stay out here when you're working a dog like this. Don't leave him alone. The chain can get wound up in his legs, especially when he's young and he hasn't been worked like this before. Bowser's actually uh, you know, spent quite a bit of time with the spring pole, so he's familiar with it. And, uh, but watch this area here, so that the dog doesn't get the chain wound up in his leg like that. Things that help that type of stuff is there's a swivel in here, you see that? There's a swivel on the snap there, which that helps when it's getting binded up. And then also, if you look on the spring pole up here, you'll see this is a special kind of spring pole. This is built by Jeff Chandler's treadmill company, and it's a... Uh, a, a special device that's used to hang heavy equipment from the inside of skyscrapers, uh, air compressors, air conditioning equipment, things like that, and it produces a much more condensed type spring pole mechanism. You can uh, use that uh, in small spaces, you know, uh, attach it to the rafters of your building and in your house and put a piece of carpet down on the ground and let the dog work that without having that three foot uh, garage door spring hanging up there. All right, Bowser, come on, buddy, work it. You're getting lazy, aren't you, huh? You're getting lazy. There you go, work it, work it. Work it, there you go. Come on, work it. Man, this, this spring pole is almost too low, you know. He's right there at that age that he's ready to go to the higher spring pole where he's extended with his feet off the ground. And, uh... When he is conditioned, he will work on that kind of spring pole, but this is the type that they're trained on as young dogs. take him and walk him out and cool him off and uh, we'll meet you back at the building and we'll worm this dog out and talk about before we go back to the building and worm Bowser out and feed him I wanted to run him on the Jenny for a minute he's a great example of a dog that's progressed on the Jenny as you saw with our other example that we worked on the spring pole and Jenny he really wasn't attuned to it and wasn't really ready for it and Bowser was much the same when he was a young dog but as time's gone on he works a spring pole a treadmill and now to Jenny with really great fury. Let me, let me show you. you know, remember, you want to keep everything fun when you're messing with young dogs. You don't want to work them to exhaustion. You want to make sure they don't get hurt. And you want to keep everything fun and short. Five, ten minutes. I don't care what you're doing with them. Whether you're running them on a Jenny, running them on a treadmill, spring pole, any kind of intense workout. You want to run the dog for no more than 10 minutes on it until he's 16, 17, 18 months old, you know? And then at that point, you'll move into actually putting a keep on the dog and conditioning him, which we'll go to next. So let's watch Bowser run the mill here for about five minutes. Just keeping it fun. He's having a good time. That's that gambler, portable Jenny. 
that's the first one Bob built. And uh, it's uh, sure holding up well. You notice his motion. He's keyed in on that hide pretty good. And this goes back to the beginning of the tape when we took the young dogs and let them play with the hide. You don't need to live bait these dogs. You don't need to use chickens. You don't need to use rabbits or anything like that. You don't even need to use stuffed animals. Just a cowhide. It's a great toy for them. They love it. And I got plenty of it. So if you need any, all you got to do is call me or write me or go to my website. I'll take your money and send you your cowhide. And as you can see, they really like it. Look at that dog. He loves it. He loves it. And he's one of those dogs that you can, you can work him into the ground. I mean, if you don't do things right, dog like this, you know, a guy would take him and run him 20, 30 minutes a day while he's in these growth stages now from 12 to 18 months and uh, ruin him, uh, cause muscle atrophy, uh, cause uh, development problems with the bones and his digestive system. Uh, that kind of work is just too much for a young dog. Now, of course, there's exceptional dogs in the history of the dog game that have been able to take that kind of work. But uh, uh, count them on your fingers and toes. You've got more fingers and toes than there were dogs like that. And remember, the point of this video is to show you how to get the most out of any dog. I don't care whether he was bred by Bubba and Boleyn down the street or come right off Floyd Boudreaux's yard. You do it right, you can get a lot more out of that dog than you ever got before. Well, that's enough with the treadmill and the spring pole. He's looking a little tired, so we're going to take him back and go ahead and give him his wormer and feed him. And uh, move on to conditioning champion Galsy. All right. He's still running a little hot. That was a little more of a workout than he's used to, being so young. Uh, I'm going to rub him down. Yeah, buddy. All right. Now, the, uh, the wormer, the island neck, we're going to give him one half cc.
It shows everything you're doing with the dog on a daily basis. Here we, you will put today's date. When you bring the dog in, as soon as you get him off the chain, you want to weigh him on your scale. So you'll weigh the dog here. Then you're going to empty him, and you'll walk him until he's emptied. And I don't care if it takes 20 minutes or two hours. And you'll walk the dog until empty. And then you'll free spin mill work him. And of course, at the beginning of the keep, we're talking about two or three minutes at a time. Then you'll walk him. Then you'll take him from the, the, the um, first mill run to the spring pole. You'll spring pole him for half the amount of time he's running the treadmill. So if he's up to five minutes on the treadmill, then this amount of spring pole time will be two and a half minutes. If he's up to 30 minutes on the treadmill, which is the maximum amount of time we work a dog at one time, then his spring pole time will be 15 minutes. Okay, then you'll go from there, you'll walk him until cool, and then you'll go back to the treadmill and work him on the uh, treadmill the same amount of time that you did here. Then you'll walk again till cool. Then you'll run him again. And you'll write all this information down. Then walk again till cool and then rub him down. And write how long that took. And then you're going to weigh him again after you do that. And you're going to write down the amount of weight he had, whether he's 44 pounds, 2 ounces, 6 ounces, whatever it is. And then the final box that you're going to fill in is your food and how much your food weighed. Because it's just as important, like I was telling you before, to weigh your food as it is to weigh your dog every day. We're going to gather data so that we're more informed in making final decisions with this dog. And uh, so this will be the form we're using, and it goes uh, 14 days. So if you're working a four-week keep, you'll use two sheets, six weeks, six, uh, three sheets, and so on. And uh, it sure is a great tool for working a dog. And we'll be using this all the way through the keep with Galtie. Uh, now what we're going to do today with Galti is we're going to worm him out. Uh, we weighed him earlier, and uh, he's 55 pounds, and so we're going to set up a worming for him for tapeworms, and we're going to ivomec him. So we're going to just basically broad spectrum worm the dog. I'm going to use Drontal Plus to worm him with uh, for the tapeworms, and then of course the ivomec to get everything. Now here's a bulldog. That dog here is all me, champion gout. And uh, I'm going to weigh him now. I already weighed him, but I'm going to weigh him again. Okay, buddy. Stay, 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 stay. Uh, he doesn't want to cooperate. So okay, what we're going to do with him is we're going to go ahead and put him on the mill and start running him. And then I'm going to put the, uh, the uh, sky kill on there. We're going to weigh him on the sky kill. Remember, that everything doesn't always work out the way you want it. Alright, so, as you can see, one big blue. 